people to know that I didn't arrive fully formed. You know, something happened that got me here. There's a, a quote from a friend of mine who wrote this play that I worked on called um, Waiting for Giovanni. It's about James Baldwin. And one of the quotes is, he didn't arrive here fully formed like a flower bloomed. It's like something had to be planted and then nourished. Sometimes it, there's a drought, sometimes it gets flooded, but then all of a sudden something comes up. Mine was, I was uh, a first grader in Denver, Colorado. And I was going to a Lutheran school. And I was Urkel before it was Urkel. I was a young Urkel then. And then I became a, another Urkel by the time I got to eighth grade. But we did a play called Scarecrow Dick. And I was one of the milkweeds, me and Sandy Erickson and Kay Louise. I always remember their names because they, were, they liked to kiss on me, which was great. And I loved that. But what I noticed was when you spoke, people listened. And I had a conscious awareness that you could change how people thought by performance. When you're in first grade, when you're six, you don't have a great voice in the world. You know, you're being told what to do all the time. But all of a sudden, you're being given this text and you get to speak it, and people are paying attention. So I was really aware that, oh, they're listening to what I'm saying, and it might make a difference if what I'm saying is important. So it was a small thing, but it let me know that this is what I wanted to do forever. And I also knew that it was a secret that I couldn't tell anybody. And why though? Because one little black kid in Denver, Colorado, um, there was no history of acting, dancing, performing in my family. And I knew that this is what made me happy. Also, you know, and it's something that you, you people have it in different times, is I was a very precocious child. And I was very much aware about sexuality. And I was very aware that um, I'm not normal in the sense of whatever that normal was. So once again, another secret, because I can't talk about these things. Who's going to believe me or who's going to support me? And how much trouble am I going to get in? Going to Lutheran school, I'm going to hell. All these things are backed up. So that became something that I learned to hold. I knew that I had to go to New York. When I was, we went to the World's Fair when I was 11. And we were on the subway. And I went, this is where I'm coming. My parents were terrified, you know, stay with us, you can't talk to anybody. It's like, you can't talk to anybody, but you can't because they were all crammed in the subway. But I knew, it was one of those, those I have these moments that I knew that this is what I was going to do. When we were in that subway, I said, I'm going to be in New York. What about New York was like, why, how did you know, Energy. Did you see that convinced you? Energy, yeah. people alive, people crammed into spaces, but, but still figuring out how to get where they had to go. It wasn't, people were not being polite and nice. They were just focused on what they had to do and they were going. It was exciting, mainly because it was dense. I think it was populate, populated with this multifaceted energy that, and I think it's something about trying to figure out how things are. I didn't, it was something I didn't know, but I, I, I had to know. And you, you sometimes suppress um, a desire because maybe it's not the right one. It's like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. This is what I got to be. Yeah, so going to New York was what I knew I was going to do. So when I went to Princeton, um, I was doing theater all the time. I was a math and philosophy major. Don't even ask. <laughs> yes. They made sense to me. How people think and how things work was what happened. Um, but I was doing theater all the time. It was home. It was like finding home. Because I spent all my years there working in that theater. So this was also a moment of who am I in the world? Because now I'm way, from, way away from home. I'm way away from people who knew me. So I got to reconstruct myself. And so there's also that finding out about, you know, who do you like? What do you like? Gender identity, as they would call it now. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, in this world going, I get to try out all this stuff. But then I took a bus up to New York. And I saw, and I took myself to go see um, Raisin, the musical of Raisin in the Sun. And I took myself to go see Pippin. And I, it was like, why am I not here? So by the time I got to be a junior, it was time to take a leave. Because I was doing so much theater, not only on campus, but I was taking trips back and forth all the time to New York. 
I got to New York after taking this withdrawal and I got a job the second weekend. I got a job the first week I was there. I was working at, as a typist, back in the old days when they had typists, <laughs> for the um, Housing and Urban Development HUD at the time. My boss, Minnie Flower, a wonderful woman from Brooklyn, she really loved me. That's why I, I, she used to, Harry Waters, and I loved her so much, she would let me go to auditions, but make sure you come back. I said, thank you, Minnie, and I would go. And, so how did it go? Did you get it? How do you think you're going to get it? You got a call back? <laughs> I had the support out of the blue. And the second week I was there, I got a job, you know, acting and stage managing. So then the following week, I got another job and that took me on a tour. So then I had my equity card. I'm beginning paid every week, so I have health insurance. You know, who knew that this was going to happen? And that turned into like six months, then a year. Then I also found out how to be in the other two unions, Screen Actors Guild and AFTRA, because I did voiceovers, I did commercials, I found out about print work, so it became a hustle. So it's New York in the 70s, and there's so much going on. That, and then, I became, then I had a, a, um, a group that I worked at, the Black Theater Alliance, but it got me into this other community of black theater, which now is called the Black Arts Movement, but they were like seven different theaters and organizations that I became a part of that gave me a way to work in that community and, and connect with people that I did not know. I had no black theater concept in Denver, Colorado. There may have been some, but I was too young to even know what it was. So all of a sudden I'm in New York and it's full and it's vibrant and it's vital and it's exciting and I'm accepted. I'm accepted on all the levels. Whoever I'm sleeping with, whatever my voice sounds like, what my physicality is, it's like you're a part of this and we'll find a place for you to do it.